When I was first learning to code, one of the most difficult things was knowing which niche or which type of coding I should learn because there's so many different niches of programming. You have web development, you have mobile development, cybersecurity, data science. How could I possibly know which one is the right for me? And this was just so difficult for me because I knew that I can't spend the time to learn all of them because that's just going to take so much time. And so what ended up happening a lot of the time is I would just sort of dabble in all of these different areas and never really be able to commit to one area because there was always the FOMO of like, okay, what if this area is better? Okay, what if there are more jobs in this area of programming? So in this video, I wanna help you if you are in this situation. What is the best niche for you to get into as a programmer? So in this video, I'm gonna go through the top five programming niches based on two criteria. Number one, which ones have the most amount as in the most opportunities? And number two, which ones pay the highest salaries and also which ones I think are gonna be the most profitable going forward to the future. And we also want it to be beginner friendly. So something that you as a beginner can realistically get into. So we're gonna exclude things like engineering manager or something like that. That's obviously gonna take tons of years of experience. So with that, let's get into the first one, which is going to be web development. Now, this is gonna be the most popular one the most obvious one and the one that realistically most of you will first get into when you're getting into programming for the simple fact that it has basically the most demand out of any area of programming and it also has very solid salaries and it is one of the easier types of programming to actually learn. So the data we'll be looking at for this video is this one from the new Stack Overflow 2024 survey that basically is the biggest survey of all kinds of software developers in the world where they track things like employment type, salaries in different countries. I will leave these links down below so you can read through the entire thing. It's a pretty interesting read. They basically release it every year. But the one we're interested specifically for this video is this one down here, salary by developer type. So you can see here that specifically backend developers, so if you don't know, web development can basically be subdivided into front-end development, backend development, and full stack development. I'm not gonna get too much into the differences there. I have full videos explaining all of them, but specifically backend development is fourth on the list of the highest salaries by developer type, where backend development basically is like the side of web development that happens like behind the scenes, where you're coding up the servers, you're coding up like the back-end business logic that is not the front-end facing part, so not the part that you necessarily see on the website, that is back-end development. And because it's more complex, it's more like logic heavy, there's more things to learn when it comes to back-end development, it is going to be more well-paid compared to something like front-end development. The only things that are above it are gonna be senior executives, so that's like very senior developers, and then managers, again, something that's gonna require a lot of experience, and we're not gonna consider those. And then mobile development, which we're gonna talk about more in a second. But the reason I've got web development specifically at the top is because this is the most beginner-friendly type of development. It's the one that's gonna have the most resources available to you online in terms of libraries, in terms of tutorials, in terms of people on YouTube talking about it. And it is going to have a, perhaps the biggest number of job opportunities out there because once we look at this other piece of data here which is going to be the percentage of developers in specific roles we can see that full stack back-end and front-end development are all at the top and you can look at like job data from your area and, and almost certainly web development is going to have the biggest number of opportunities out so the question will obviously be how do you learn web development in the fastest possible way that can get you that first job in the industry well there's two kinds of ways you can of course go the do-it-yourself route and there's bunch of amazing free tutorials out there, free courses that you can get into. The downside is gonna be that it's gonna take slightly longer and you might have to like sort of stitch together your path from a couple of different courses. Now I did this myself, so it can absolutely be done. But if you have the money to invest into your own career and you want the most premium resource out there, what I recommend is a resource called Course Careers. Now Course Careers is essentially a full program from a beginner in programming into a full job ready software engineer. What you start with is learning the software development fundamentals. So essentially what is software development, what is programming, things like this. And after you have learned these foundations, you will actually get to choose your niche of programming from choices between backend development, frontend development, and also DevOps. And all of these different parts are taught by actual industry experts who have worked in these specific jobs. And the reason why I recommend this as the most premium option 
option out there is because it's not just a course that will teach you the technical skills, but they will also have connections directly to employers. And this way, for example, Max got a job as a software engineer without applying for a single job himself because he just got connected to the employer directly via course careers. And on top of this, they also have mentoring. They have a full Discord group where you can speak directly to the instructors of the program if you get stuck. They're going to create your resume for you and relative to what you get, the price is actually extremely, extremely reasonable. And what they also have is a free introduction course to software development that you can get started with. So I highly recommend you at least start with that free course down below in the description. And thank you for Course Careers for sponsoring this video. With that said, the second niche that I recommend is going to be mobile development. So on these statistics, we can see that the average salary for mobile developers is actually even higher than web developers. The only reason I put this below web development is because it's going to have less opportunities available if you look at the percentage of developers in mobile development, it's only 3.4% compared to if we add up full stack back end and front end, this will become what more than 50% of developers. But mobile development is also something that is going to keep having very strong demand. We all use our mobile devices every single day. So all kinds of tech companies, new startups want to capture as much of the attention that you're putting into these devices as possible. So if you're perhaps interested in building mobile apps, that's something you're interested in going with mobile development is also definitely not going to be a bad option at all. I haven't done too much mobile development, but if we just compare it to web development, mobile development is going to be a bit more visual. And with this, you're also going to be learning more specific languages like Swift for iOS development, Kotlin, you have specific frameworks like React Native. They're going to be very specific for creating mobile apps. So I would go for mobile development if you know that specifically you want to build mobile apps. Number three is going to be data science, AI and machine learning. I've sort of lumped these three together even though they are slightly different and to explain the difference you can sort of view it with this kind of diagram where data science is like the big group of development and then within that is AI so AI is part of data science and then machine learning is again one part of AI so there's many kinds of AI machine learning is part of them obviously out of all of these machine learning specifically gets a lot of attention because a lot of the very exciting applications that people think have the biggest potential at least in recent years has been specifically in machine learning. So there's a lot of hype around AI, as you're probably aware, around machine learning, data science. So this is something that has a very good chance of growing a lot in the future. If you get into this, you can be pretty sure that, that your skills are definitely going to be in demand. Although as a caveat, I will say that just because AI is so popular right now, specifically relating to the large language models like ChatGPT, things like this, doesn't mean that demand for AI developers is necessarily going to explode as much as you might think, because a lot of the AI craze right now is actually not in terms of developing AI from scratch. It is simply about using this new AI technology, this new large language model technology to essentially like create a software layer on top of it to like utilize it for some specific purpose. But with that said, all the tech companies are heavily investing into AI, which means they're also heavily investing into AI developers. So this is definitely not a bad path to get into at all. The downside is going to be that out of all these three paths that I'm talking about, this is going to be the hardest one to get into as a beginner because a lot of the time they will prefer people who have very specialized and very mathematical degrees because this is going to be the most mathematical and like most rigorous path out of all the ones that we're talking about here. But if you really want to get in and you're really serious, then there will be a way for you to do it. And we can see that in terms of salaries, AI developers, 160K, and then right below it, data science or machine learning, basically the same thing. And in terms of as a percentage, of developers, they're not that high as of yet. But the reason why I've ranked it so high is because I think it has a lot of future potential. Next, we have data engineering. So what data engineering is, is you're essentially taking data in the world and you're making it into a form that is easy to use by, for example, data scientists, or actually the people who then make predictions and like create machine learning models based on this data and things like that. And the reason data engineering is so important because there is so much data out there and a lot of the value created by a lot of tech companies is specifically in getting a lot of data and then like drawing insights from that data. If you just think of an example, whenever you explore some topic online, all these platforms like Google are going to collect a bunch of data about your behavior when you're searching for things on Google, for example. And there's a bunch of data they could collect. They could collect things like the keywords you use, the websites you visited, the content you've engaged with, and even the average time spent in different websites and things like this. So what data engineers will do is like design algorithms and systems to make 
it easy to track all of this data in the most useful way possible. And then those systems and this sort of cleaned up data is then given into data scientists who then make predictions based on that data and actually design machine learning models who then will predict your behavior or like categorize you for advertising or things like this. So that's the role of the data engineer. And as you can imagine, super, super important. And it's gonna keep being more and more important because the world will always keep generating data and that data will always keep being useful for companies. And there's always a bunch of things we as humans are gonna wanna learn and do based on it. And in terms of salaries, again, they're gonna be very high, 150K on average, and 1.9% of developers are going to be data engineers. And finally, we have DevOps. Now, DevOps is technically actually part of web development, but I've categorized it slightly differently because this is not usually what people think about when you're thinking about web development. What DevOps is, is essentially like support for web development. That's how I like to view it. So every big web development team, so when you're doing web development as part of a company, is going to have a DevOps engineers that essentially create the systems that allow the web developer teams to function as efficiently as possible. And a lot of the time, if there's anything that breaks within the infrastructure that your team uses to develop your project, then it's the job of the DevOps engineer to essentially fix it so that the team can function. I found this funny quote on Reddit, from someone explaining what DevOps is. The task of a DevOps engineer is to start to do whatever task I'm supposed to be doing and then drop what I'm doing because something or someone broke something and they don't know how to fix it and then repeat. And at my job, whenever I spoke to DevOps engineers, that's essentially how they would describe it. Your job is basically to put out fires that are created when some dumb intern commits some wrong code or, or break some tests or whatever. So DevOps is gonna be well-paid specifically because it is kind of boring and kind of very complicated and technical. So if you're interested in that, then you can have a very good chance to have a very lucrative career in DevOps because you're gonna have much less competition than something like front-end development now or back-end developer that's gonna be the more sexier part of web development. In terms of salaries, a DevOps specialist is apparently paid 145K on average and as a percentage of total developers, it's gonna be 1.7%. And by the way, if you go through course careers, DevOps is also gonna be one of the specializations that you can choose as part of the program. So to me, these are the top five niches that you can get into as a programmer if your goal is to make as much money as possible, specifically 10K a month. But what's also good news is that working a job as a developer is actually only one of the four different ways to make $10,000 a month using coding. And in this video right here, I go through the four different ways that you can actually use your coding skills to make $10,000 a month, even if you don't want to work a traditional job.